Hi guys, it's Mandy from Mandy Lee Plays, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my top 10 JRPGs that you need to play on your Nintendo Switch. Now, I did a video like this about a year ago, so I'm not going to recycle the games that I've mentioned there, so go check that video out if you want to, but a lot has happened, and a lot, a lot of games have come out since a year ago so I thought it was appropriate to do an updated one as well so let's get into the video. My first pick is Atelier Sophie 2 The Alchemist of the Mysterious Dream. Now in my last video I put um, Ryza so it was appropriate that I put a new Atelier game in this year's and it didn't disappoint. This game is awesome. It's a good sequel to Atelier Sophie that in you don't even need to play Atelier Sophie to get hooked and sucked into this world. It is a very very fun game and you guys know I love the Atelier series. It's one of my favorites. So while Atelier Ryza was my first Atelier game, I feel like Atelier Sophie 2 was kind of the game that really got me into the series and really got me invested. So I highly recommend. It's a nice slice of life game and it's nothing too hectic. The alchemy is very addicting and the characters are just so fun to be around. Overall, this game is just a load of fun. Highly recommend. Now my next pick is Bravely Default 2. So you've probably heard of this game in my other JRPG video for beginners. And that's for a reason because it's a good solid JRPG. It's very classic, it's very fun. The different classes are just fun to play around with. The little costumes are adorable. The story, while not the best, is still a classic story about four friends venturing off to save the world. You can never go wrong with those, but it's a very, very good game. The gameplay, again, is just so addicting, and it makes you just want to grind, which is weird because usually people don't want to grind, but in this game, it's really fun, and I highly recommend you pick it up. So in my videos for JRPGs for Beginners, a lot of people mention these games, which I totally forgot, which is totally, like, dumb Mandy dumb, because they're really good games, and that is... Nino Kuni 1 and Nino Kuni 2. I put them together. Nino Kuni 2 is actually for the Switch. It's just my copy I bought on the PlayStation. But these two games are just so, so cute, so whimsical. And what makes these stand out even more is they have the Studio Ghibli art style that everybody loves. And it looks really good. Now, for me, I personally enjoy Nino Kuni 2 first. And the stories don't really intertwine. So you could play them how you like, when you like. Nino Kuni 2 has the best gameplay in my opinion and overall structure. While Nino Kuni 1 I think had the best story and impact emotionally than 2, though Nino Kuni 1 could be really hard. <laughs> now the gameplay for this game is like a Pokemon kind of style where you throw familiars at the foe and then they duke it out. I mean your character could do stuff too but it's mostly your uh, familiars doing the job. Whereas Nino Kuni 2 kind of reamped it where it's more of the characters are doing the job and it's way more fun. Story-wise, this one packs a punch. Two packs a punch too, but not as much as one. Now the next game on my list is- Alright, so I'm going to have to pause it here because I don't want this video to be just my picks. So I asked two of my fellow YouTuber friends to add their JRPGs on the list. So I'll let them take it away from here. Go guys! Hi, this is Emily over at Overology, and the Nintendo Switch JRPG that I wanted to bring a little bit more attention to is Token Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore. So this was originally a Wii U game that was enhanced and brought over to the Nintendo Switch, and it has so many weird and wacky elements that really creates a unique experience. This was advertised as a collaboration between Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei, and while there are elements of definitely both of those franchises, I would say this is more akin to a Persona-like game, both with its sort of flashy, over-the-top nature and its gameplay. So the main characters are part of a Japanese idol company, and so you do see a lot of singing and pop cultural references traveling around familiar parts of Tokyo. But at these various locations, there are these dimensional rifts that regular people are mistakenly wandering into. So you have to go into these alternative dimensions that are full of demons and other creatures to save them. 
So that's the main premise of the game, but I think where this game really shines is in the combat system. For the combat, they do have the classic JRPG turn-based system, but they introduce a few different elements to change up the formula. This is actually where the Fire Emblem elements come into play. So they have these what are called mirages that they summon in order to fight these demon-like creatures. And it also utilizes the strengths and weaknesses of different element types and weapon types that is utilized in a lot of Fire Emblem games. So while this is a very niche game, even within the JRPG genre, definitely don't let the idle elements where they sometimes break out in song during their combat combos deter you from this game. So if there's anything that slightly piqued your interest, I highly recommend that you give this game a go because it is really, I think, one of the most unique JRPG experiences you could have on the Nintendo Switch at this time. And as far as JRPGs go, it doesn't overstay its welcome. So you could easily finish this game up and do most of the side missions within 40, 45 hours. So I definitely recommend this game for anyone who wants a unique JRPG experience and also a good game to fit in before Persona 5 and a few of the other Persona entries get ported over to the Switch. Sup guys, Jugs here, and I'm hijacking Mandy's video to talk about a certain game she forgot to put in her list though, but to be fair, she doesn't have the game to begin with though, so I'm gonna cut her some slack right there though. The game I'm gonna be talking about is Live a Live. Live a Live is a JRPG that never came out to the West. Don't know the reasons why though, but I would assume it would have to be related to, you know, sales. If that was the case though, that's usually the safe bet on why games never released to the West if they were released in Japan first. Though. But that's besides the point though. This game right here was remade from the ground up by none other than Team Asano, who made none other than Octopath Traveler, Triangle Strategy. The point is though, they know how to make good games and a banger live a live is though if you think about it though it, this game was like octopath travel before octopath travel was a thing though except every character is in an isolated universe unlike an octopath traveler where every character shares the same continent and they all meet up with each other for some grand big old story by the end of it comparisons out the way live a live gives you seven characters to play with which each their own different settings and their own different gimmicks in one chapter, you get to play as a robot in which you do repairs for the spaceship and then suddenly, I'm not going to explain, you know, the whole spoilers behind it though, but it suddenly becomes a murder mystery type of situation. I'm not going to say much after that though. Another chapter, you get to play as like a prehistoric kid and basically no one cannot even say a word though, but you know, dialogue is spoken through like the many animations and let me tell you, the animations behind them is comedy gold, like peak comedy. I can tell you that much. No, another reason why I like the game is the non-linearity behind it. You have more than the freedom to choose whichever character you want to choose. For all I care, you can start within the near future and then transition to the Wild West or something. Or from the Wild West, you could go to the Imperial China. Yeah, I'm trying to remember on top of my head though, all these scenarios. I played it recently though. I can't forget this. <laughs> Plus it also helps that each scenario is not too grind heavy and pretty short to begin with though, which is a blessing to people who are trying to get into the JRPG genre though, who thinks that is a time sink to begin with, which is not, well, to be fair, it is though back in the day though, but nowadays, JRPGs are known to be a lot easier than what they were back in the day. Now, I would like to talk some more about the game, though, because, you know, I'm only talking about surface level stuff and, you know, spoilers, of course, though. But, you know, I'm just going to say that I definitely recommend Live a Live to be put into your JRPG collection. As a matter of fact, I'm sticking with the title. It's essential. It is an essential JRPG. But yeah, that's all I'm going to be saying about Live a Live for now, though. If you want to see more long form videos, subscribe to my channel at Jugs McGee. Thank you, Amanda, for inviting me onto this video. I really appreciate it. Now, the next game on my list is Shin Megami Tensei 5 for the Switch. This game is awesome, though the story was kind of um, questionable at times, like really questionable. But overall, it was a very enjoyable experience. And this one has this thing where you get different routes. So it kind of incentivizes you to play more routes or play again, but in a different way, which is cool. So the aspect that I love most about this game, and a lot of people agree with me on this, is the gameplay. It is freaking awesome. Now this game takes the classic turn-based gameplay and turns it on its head and makes it more like exciting because you have to really analyze your enemies because if you hit an enemy and they're blocked or it doesn't do anything they get an extra turn and you lose a turn which is very very bad because enemies will take the advantage and wipe your whole party out so you really gotta think in the gameplay and it's so exciting and it's so fun 
and it makes you really invest into what kind of demons do you want in your party you know leveling up and doing all that stuff before hopping into a battle because it can mean you know dead in like one turn i think smt5 is a little bit on the easy side though when i say that i was playing on normal when you play it on hard i don't know it could be the hardest game of all time i don't know but for me i had a very very good ride with this game on normal now i hate to say this because i'm a story person but the gameplay really holds the game up not the story so if you just want a nice game with cool gameplay mechanics then this is the game for you so if you wanted to play a smt game then jumping right into five is a good idea all right and the next game is another series that i didn't bring up in my jrpgs for beginners and that is yeast monstrum knocked or yeast Black or most of Donna for the Switch. They're both on the Switch. This is just a PlayStation 4 version, but there's a Switch version of it. No worries. I really didn't put it on my beginners list because this series is a long running series, but they don't interact with each other. Like Lacrimosa of Donna, it's its own isolated story, and this one, it's its own isolated story. So why I added the Yeast series is because they're really, really good. My favorite, well, I've only played like two, is Lacrimosa of Donna. That one was really, really good. It gave you that whole lost kind of vibe where everyone's on an island, they don't know each other, and they have to depend on each other. So it's really cool. I actually like the premise of that, being stranded with strangers, having to forge for food and resources, having to question who your enemies are and all that jazz. Awesome storytelling. And I can see why it's its own isolated story because they're literally isolated from the world. And then discovering ruins and ancient people and this lady. Now Monstrous Knocked, um, I liked. Uh, I, I really like Black and Most of Donna better, but this one is still a really solid game. The characters are very quirky and weird. It doesn't have that Stranded Island feel that I liked a lot, but it has its own twist with this, you know, mystical disease going around and all that jazz. So I highly recommend the Yeast series, be it Lacrimosa of Donna or Monstrum's Nox, because those are the only two on the Switch that I know of. Oh, and Yeast Origins. I don't know what's up with that one, I never played it, but from what I've heard from other people, it's good. So the next game on this list is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. This game has a wild story in a good way in a very good way <laughs> you would think something and then it would just flip it on its head it's so so good i'm a visual novel but the way the game works it's split into like two categories the gameplay and the story so you can literally pick the story first and play through that before even knowing anything about the gameplay Though the story portion, sometimes you can't progress because you're not up to date with the gameplay. So it makes you, you know, go back and forth, but it still gives you that freedom of choosing, which is very fresh, very weird, but very fresh, but it works in this sense. Now the gameplay part is this mecha strategy game, but it's basically you're in this big mecha robot and you have to fight um, something called kaijus. Now, I play it on normal because I didn't want to get too deep into the whole kaiju kind of gameplay thing going on because it could go really deep if you want to. But what I was interested in was the story and man did that not disappoint. So basically you follow 13 students and their stories, how they intertwine and how ultimately it comes together and discover the mystery of the world. Now that's all I can say about a synopsis. Like I said, the thing is like anything you say is a potential spoiler, but you know, trust me on this fam, the story is wild and it's really, really good. Highly recommend. Oh, and again, like the other ones, this one I have for the PlayStation, but it is on the Switch as well. A lot of the reasons why I have PlayStation editions rather than Switch edition is because they usually release these games on the PlayStation first. And the Switch port comes within like a year or two. And sometimes I don't want to wait and have a PlayStation. So I'll pick up the PlayStation version. But in these videos, I make sure to know that there is a Switch port because this is for Switch games. 
before I recommend it to you guys. And the next game on the list is Pokemon Legend Arceus. Now, this is probably like the only Pokemon game I hold with high regards. It's so good. Pokemon Arceus is a different take on the formula of Pokemon where you're going to the past, which is really cool. And also it's an open world concept kind of Pokemon game with different mechanics that made it very, very new and fresh and just something other than, you know, the traditional Pokemon game spiel. And I feel like this one is cool, different, it adds something fresh to the Pokemon series and I think I liked it because it wasn't your normal Pokemon game and it was something different. Now, the graphics look ugly, not gonna lie. <laughs> they look really ugly at times, but the gameplay and just the overall open worldness. And I love how this game added so much new stuff and tried something different because I just love Pokemon when they're trying something different. Because even if it doesn't work out, I feel at least they're trying. So this game, while it is a very good game, the graphics might be ugly, but the gameplay loop and everything else, the story is different and I just loved it about the game. So I highly recommend if anybody's on the fence, while not being traditional, it's a good game to play, especially if you're waiting for Scarlet and Violet. Now on to the last game, and that is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now in my last best JRPGs for the Switch, I put Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, and I didn't want to repeat myself, so it came in handy when there's a third one. Now, to be fair, I haven't really finished this game, like at all. I'm actually pretty early on in this game, but I can already tell it's a good JRPG to have on your Switch. Now, I really love the Xenoblade series. It's one of my favorites up there, and I enjoyed 1, I enjoyed 2, and I really, really enjoyed 3 so far. It is just fantastic. The music is non-stop. <laughs> like, it's just overall good music. The story seems like it has a lot of intrigue in it. Like I said, I'm not that deep into it and have so much questions. Like, a lot of questions. But I can't wait to just dig into the story and figure out what's going on and help our little band of uh, heroes along the way. And the combat is just weird at first. You're gonna think it's weird, but when you get used to it and you get in the swing of things and vibing, it's really really good and I just highly highly recommend it. There's so much things that they added into the game that's not in 1 or 2 or they kind of spruced up or made it better for 3. It's just an overall great game so far and that's just because I'm in the beginning. Imagine in the middle like there's so much to discover, so much to learn and I can't wait to just play this game. Now I got this question from somebody asking if they should just jump into 3 and not play 1 or 2. As somebody who loves the series, I would always say play 1 and 2 if you have them. But you know, for practical reasons or if they just want to start with 3 and then work their way backwards, then I say go straight to 3. It has the more modern stuff put into it that the other two didn't have. It has a lot of tweaks and things that make it more streamlined and newer and better kind of vibe. Not saying the other ones are not better or not good, they're freaking awesome games. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is my favorite actually. And another point is I started the Xenoblade Chronicles journey with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, not 1. So I played it out of order kind of. So if you want to just jump into 3, that's fine. They're kind of isolated, though they do connect a bit and then work your way backwards if you like it, or just play 3 if you really like it. Though I highly recommend the other two that are on the Switch as well. So that's my list for my top 10 JRPGs you should have for your Nintendo Switch. We are eating good on the JRPG table this year, and I enjoy a lot of them. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, because there are games that I haven't even mentioned. So if you have a game you would like to put on the list down below, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button, would appreciate it. And if you like my channel and would love to see more, then hit that subscribe button as well. You can follow me on my Twitter at Plays. Hope you guys have a beautiful rest of the day, and as always, 
Have a good game. Peace, peace.